Hi everybody! My name is Lilia, my partner Yaroslav here and I have prepared something special for you uh, for our second class on Dance Vision. So we would like to say a huge thank you first of all to everyone who's joined today and also thank you for the guys who have watched last Sunday. Thank you so much for all your comments and feedback. We really appreciate it. Now, something that uh, I would like to offer today is that you guys are doing exercises at the same time with us. We find those exercises very helpful for your coordination and those will help you tremendously in dancing standard. So I hope you get up and do those simple exercises during this class today with us. So let's get started, Yarislav. Come over. <laughs> Hi everybody! So, what we have prepared for you today is this subject. We're going to talk about five kinds of steps that we do in standard. Only five of them and each kind of step is going to have its own exercise and it's going to have its own basically rule or principle. Now, knowing those rules and principles will allow you to understand and coordinate yourself greatly in order to dance any complicated figure in your routine. Now, uh, you will know exactly what you will have to do on each and every step and there will be never a confusion. So hopefully you will do those exercises with us and hopefully you will understand those uh, as we explain them to you today. And uh, I would like to assure you that all those exercises are coming from our experience. We're teaching them on a daily basis and they're all quite successful. People are very clear after doing them and uh, it gives you an understanding where you are in the particular moment of time in your choreography and uh, what you need to do. Because as Lilia had mentioned, those steps are everywhere, you just mix and match them uh, differently throughout your routine. Exactly. Alright, so we're going to start uh, with the first type of uh, uh, step, which is a forward or a backward uh, step. Uh, in, order, in order to do that, we have to roll back a little bit and just to explain you quickly uh, how we initiate movement forward and backwards because without that first initiation, it's going to be very difficult uh, to move and very uh, difficult to understand the motion as you're moving. So therefore, really that exercise will be useless without that first initiation of the movement. Alright, so now, what we want you to do, this exercise is very simple, you can do it literally everywhere because it requires uh, zero space. All you need to do is to put your feet uh, together, stand straight, remember posture is very very important, you can always check yourself by putting your hand on top of your head and have this uh, feeling of standing upright. If you can create a little bit of pressure from your head to the uh, hand, that would be great. So that just gives you an awareness. Now, first exercise is, we are going to stay straight and we will be facing each other, but you can do it totally on your own. Now, I am going to exercise my body flight. So, I am going to move my body weight forward on the ball of the foot and then backwards on the heel. Again, I am rolling it forward on the ball of the foot, backwards on the heel, and I am forming a type of metronomic action where the top of the metronome is my whole body and the bottom of the metronome is foot. So my foot attached to the floor with the sole of the foot and then the top is here floating in the air. Alright, so we're going to do it on uh, eight counts and this is our body flight forward and backwards. Ready? Try doing it together with us guys, this is very helpful. Don't skip the workout, you have to do it. Okay. So, we're going to start uh, by rolling our weight forward. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. One, two, rolling forward, three, backward, four, forward, five. Six and two more. Seven, eight. All right, Lilia, how do you feel? I feel great. Not I'm, dizzy. I'm not dizzy, but it is. Um, it looks very simple, but it's not easy to do. I should say. We should really go for the quality of that body 
flight and uh, therefore we have to engage our core a lot. So the wrong right. exercise would be bending this way or that way. So in order for us to create a good metronomic action, a good body flight, we must engage our abdominal muscles and as Derek said, uh, make sure our posture is very good, our head is upright, our ribs are upright and as we move our core is very engaged. Absolutely. All right, very good. So now, we're going to the next bit that will help us to understand how we initiate the movement forward. So this was the first bit, our body flight. Now the second bit is, we have to use correctly our ankle joint. This is quite a difficult subject that took us many years to understand and a few more years to do it, and we still feel like there is a room for improvement. Uh, but we really would like to, uh, to give you a few things today so you can uh, try it at home. So, uh, we all know hopefully where the ankle joint is. That's the joint that connects our foot to our uh, shin bone. And it's very easy to see how ankle joint works with the leg free of weight. So if I don't have my body weight on the leg and I simply uh, move my foot out from my body and into my body, I can clearly see that ankle joint works both ways, away from me and to me, all right? So I'm going one, two. Now the problem starts uh, even before we dance. The problem starts when we just have the body weight on the leg and then we're trying to uh, use the ankle joint. So that word, use your ankle joint, was confusing me for a very long period of time and then I understood at the end that the way I understood the usage of the ankle joint was not the way the teacher was trying to teach me sometimes. So everybody was doing their best, me, to understand the teacher and teacher teaching me, but actually we were talking a little bit about different things. So finally, we have the clear picture of that. And we would like to share this with you. So, when we, uh, when we are doing the action away, from, uh, from our body with an ankle joint and we have our body weight on it. This is what's going to happen with my body. I'm going up, then I'm going back to neutral. Then again I'm going up, then again I'm going back to neutral. All right? So this is just one part of the usage of the ankle joint. Now there is another part, the most important one, the one that actually allows us to move forward and backwards. And that part is uh, when my foot is going to my body and I have to create the angle between my shin bone and my foot. All right? So that's, that's the bit that is uh, quite difficult to get. I would say a little bit more difficult than, than another one. So in order to do that, I would like you to feel that we're standing on uh, two feet and now our shin bone goes forward. All right? As you can see, I'm trying to keep uh, my posture and my spine vertical and I'm doing something like that. Now, when I'm doing it, I'm really trying not to lift my heels off the floor. So I'm always standing on my flat foot. And I would like uh, to demonstrate you uh, one, uh, it's not really an exercise, but I think it will give you a more exaggerated, clear picture of uh, what's going on. So. Let me just bring those uh, two pillows. Please do not try it at home, okay? I don't want you to, to hurt yourself. This is just for you to have a good imagination. Yeah, that's just for you to understand what's going on. So if I put those pillows in, the, in front of myself, here, okay? Now I'm standing on my two feet. Now, what I'm trying to do here is I'm allowing my shin bone to travel forward and then my foot stays on the same spot here. So, if I'm doing it correctly, again, this is not something we're going to uh, do literally when we're dancing, but this is how our ankle joint works when we create a step forward. So, okay, a little bit, a little bit scary. Always scary for me, always excited to do this stuff. So, I'm going to do something like that. Watch. My shin bone travels forward, my foot stays on one spot, and if I exaggerate and go even more, this is what's going to happen. All right? Good. Wow, this was a soft landing. <laughs> I always expect worse. <laughs> hey guys, this is an exaggerated version. Yes, just uh, let, let's do it one more time. I will roll, roll off uh, my pencil a little bit. So I'm going to go straight and going forward. Okay. 
Now, I'm taking this out of my way. Hopefully you, you had a clear picture on that uh, soft landing. So, when I'm, uh, when I'm doing the step uh, forward now, what I'm trying to do is, this is my left foot and I choose this to be my standing leg. So, standing on the uh, left leg and creating the step forward, what I'm going to do is, first thing, remember, we have our body flat. And then, at the same time, we are going to use our ankle joint, just the same way I just uh, showed you with those pillows. So, by moving the body forward and creating that angle in my shin bone, I will break my step forward. I will just do it today up to this uh, neutral position when I'm in between two feet with my weight. Alright? So let's do it one more time. And body flight, ankle joint, step. And again, roll it backwards. Body flight, ankle joint, step. Okay. Now remember, this is just an exercise. Hopefully by this time you feel there is some work going on in uh, the joint. How about we do a couple of those? Let's do eight steps forward using our left ankle and step with yes, our right that's, foot. That's a good idea. And I'm going to count for you. And Work. one. Okay. And I'm going to uh, to stay like that sideways so you can all see uh, w what is going on with my uh, left ankle. So if you guys are ready, and we're going to fly with the body and use the ankle. One, we're yeah. going to step. Okay. Ready? Ready. And one. Come back to three. One more time. And two. Come back. Three. And three. Come back. Three. And four. Back. Three. And five. Come back. And six. Come back. And seven. And the last one, and eight. Very good. This exercise is very good for the legs as well, so you must feel the Let's do it on another leg because I feel like one leg, <laughs> the one leg is bigger than the other one. Alright guys, let's switch the leg. So now we're going to use the right ankle joint, right foot supporting, and then we're going to step with the left foot forward. Yeah, I'm ready. We're ready. Eight times again, ready? And one. Come back, two, three. And two, two. Three and four. Three. Two, three and four. Two. Three and five. Two. Three and six. Two. Three and seven. Two. Three and the last one and eight. Two. Three. Oh, Always is, happens to me. I get so excited. That was not easy. <laughs> All right, now you guys hopefully feel a little bit more warm in your legs. And we really hope you feel that bending happening through this ankle joint. So those joints are being used as well as our knees and our hips. Do not underestimate the ankle joint. It's very important as we move. Correct. I certainly feel much more work in my legs right now. So now. Okay, so the good, the good news are that three main joints of our leg are always working in sync with each other. We have to do something really, really strange in order for them to disconnect from one another and let's say only my knee is going to work but not my hip. So those joints, even if we're doing something like that, my hip, knee and ankle will always be trying to balance the motion and it's going to be they're going to be working all together. Simultaneously. Yes. All right. So this is the way we initiate our uh, movement forward. This was an exercise. It actually well, uh, quelled, <laughs> felt quite tough for me, even though I'm dancing for more than 20 years. Now, the point is, when we dance uh, our choreography or when we are competing or dancing with a partner, the initiation starts from us moving our weight forward or backwards so we're moving it forward now you know how the ankle joint works together with the shin bone so then we allow it to happen but to allow it to happen we have to spend some time to do this exercise uh, to develop that uh, skill now we are i just would like to show you the movement backwards okay so now Another good news is that our ankle bends only forward, it cannot bend backwards. So those two actions that I described you, they can only be done forward. We can go the other way, the other way around. 
If you can go the other way around, comment below. <laughs> When you are on the yeah, stage. just so we know who you are and then maybe send us some video how you're going to do that. Okay, so now, when I'm going backwards, I'm going through the same sequence of actions, except uh, my body is going to go backwards, right? So, as I'm staying backwards, now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release my ankle joint. And as you can see, my shin bone starts having this angle forward. And now, as I'm releasing the ankle joint simultaneously, I'm sending my body flight, my body weight backwards on my heel. So the challenge is really to dive it properly and to go backwards with that. So I'm gonna go ankle, send the body backwards, and I'm going to go backwards. Alright? And again, ankle, send the body backwards, I'm going to go backwards. Let's do each of those one more time. Oh my god. All okay. Right. <laughs> Shake those legs, loosen up a little bit. Um, let's start standing on the right foot. Yeah. Preparing the left foot to go backwards. And again, and is the preparation. One is a step, eight of those. Are you ready guys? Let's do it together with us. Never yeah, ready. Okay. Alright. And one. Come back two. Three. And one. Two. Three. And one, two, three, and one, two, three, four more, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. Good job, guys. How does it feel? A little warmer on the legs? Yeah, just a little warmer. Just a little bit. Yeah. Listen up, shake them, and let's switch the same leg. I'm gonna count. All right, guys, let's start right away. Moving the right foot backwards. Ready? And one, two, three, and two, two, three, and three, two, three, back and four, two, three, and five, two, three. Keep in the posture and six, two, three, and seven, two. Last one and eight, two, three. All right, very nice. Okay. Very good. Train our legs and we get those two legs. Yeah, trains me so well today. <laughs> All right, guys, so as you can see, this first uh, type of steps, uh, moving linear forwards and backwards, and Jaroslav has explained to you the first principle applicable to that type is that our body has to travel, has to initiate, our body flight has to initiate our weight movement, and our ankle joint has to accommodate that weight movement by releasing and bending. That is how we get the big steps and the smooth movement sure. going. So now the second principle that we're going to uh, check and we're going to exercise today together with you is the body rotation. Now for everybody who has watched our last online class, our last live video last Sunday, first of all thank you so much one more time, and for everyone who has watched uh, please remember the rotary exercises. If you have remembered those, we stood between two feet and we have rotated our torso isolated way uh, in relation to our head and our pelvis. So this is what we are going to apply here for the first type of steps, forwards and backwards. Because any kind of figure will start with those steps and it will start turning somewhere. So it either will turn to the right or to the left and this is where we are going to introduce our body rotation. Brilliant. So, <laughs> we're going to do that exercise with the same principles, body flight, ankle joint flexion. And we're going to start forward, and uh, Yaroslav is going to demonstrate that. And we're going to arrive to center balance position. Why well, I'm the one always demonstrating today. <laughs> you train your legs, I'm going to catch up with you. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to arrive to that center balance position. Let's do it together here. Body flight, ankle, and one. In center balance position, we're going to remember that exercise with the rotation of our ribcage and we're going to start rotating the ribcage as we're traveling on the foot, the leg, the free foot underneath the body. That is going to be an end beat. And we're going to return back on two, three. So again, and body flight and ankle flexion. One is a step, center balance, square in the body, and after one, rotate the ribcage around right the foot and come back. So here's the exercise and your is going to show Let's it. just show straight away to the left and then do it all together. A to the right, A to the left. Of 
Oh, yes, yeah. so to the left. To the side, to the left. The same principle. We're going to step forwards for the left leg. And one. And keep the head still. Come back to three. And one more time. And one. And come back to three. So now Yaroslav is totally ready. Do you feel warmer in your legs? Yes, as well, as well, of course. Now, Yaroslav is going to do straight. Eight to the right, eight to the left. And we hope you are doing it together with us. Well, maybe these after are great. this lesson I'll become a champion. <laughs> Again, these guys, these exercises are great for your coordination. Uh, these steps are literally everywhere. Okay, so let's do it in uh, practice form. Do you want to go a little bit more central? So no, I, think, I think we should. All right, guys, ready? And one, and come back to slowly. And one, and two, three. And one, and two, three. And one, and two, three. Four more. And one, and two, three. And one, and two, three, and one, and two, three, last one, and one, and two, three, great job, Yaroslav, how do you feel guys? <laughs> Alright, let's switch to the left foot right away, so weight on the right foot, left foot, ready to go, rotation to the left, same principles, movement and rotation, ready? Make sure guys, when you do it, for this exercise, try to keep your head still, isolated from your chest. So, if you look at me and I'm doing it wrong, I'm going to do it this way, you see? So, I have to move, rotate to the left, but keep my head still straight. Looking at you guys, alright? Okay. So, remember the rotation happens in the ribcage, pelvis quite still, and just for this exercise, head also stays on the spot. Ready? And one, and two, three. And one, and two. Three and one and two, three and one and two, three. Four more and one and two, three. Three more and one and two, three and one and two, three. Just the last one and one and two, three. Very good. Good job, Ursula. Great warm up to start the day or Great to start warm up. the practice. Great warm up. Always tired. <laughs> All right, now my turn, I think. Yeah, this okay. is a revenge. <laughs> um, so we'll look at the backward steps. Yeah, sure. So, as Yaroslav has explained again, we have the same sequence. Yeah, the same, same sequence, sequence for us when, when we are moving backwards, uh, except of direction, obviously, forward to backwards. And let's do the same exercise, try to uh, isolate our body and rotate just on, on one step. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but just moving backwards. And maybe uh, I would like to ask Lydia to do it sideways, so people can see you. Yeah? Alright. So I'm going to stand over my left foot, and I'm going to just put my, cross my fingers together, close my fingers together on my chest, and um, just create this side. Of Let's start face. on your right foot and move to the left foot uh, yeah. backwards. Yeah. Alright? Okay, so let's do it 20 times, uh, it 20 times <laughs> each leg. This is not fair. Just to warm up. Alright. Okay. And one, and two, three. And one, turn to the right, and two, three. And one, and two, three. And one, and two, three. And one, and two, three. Okay, not bad. One and two, three. I enjoy this roll much more. <laughs> one and two, three. I think it's one more. And yeah. one and two, three. Okay, not bad. Just to just yeah. warm up a little bit. Shake yes. it, shake it, guys. Okay, I enjoy the role of the teacher counting much more. I can do it. Guys, I hope you exercise. The days are really good. Don't skip the leg day. <laughs> okay, please turn, turn around, turn, turn around. around, yes. And, and we're going to switch the same leg. So Lila is standing on her left leg right now, her right leg will be the one moving backwards, and then she's going to do all the same uh, exercise again, but turning to the left, keeping her head still, 
beautiful uh, straight posture, <laughs> smile. Okay, ready? And one, and two, three. I think and I made a mistake. She really wants to look at the camera, but she is not allowed. And one, and two, three. 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 Two more. And one, and two, three. And one, and two, three. Okay? No. Great. Feel good. We did this one. So now, this is an exercise to train our body, to get some skill, to feel our balance and uh, stability. And uh, eventually, when we use this exercise in, in some sequence of steps, in some figures or combinations, uh, it's just a small bit towards that figure. So this is not the only thing you have to do. And maybe some body parts will take over in the figure. But to initiate and to train yourself, we believe this is a great exercise to develop your body and your uh, physical ability to do that. Exactly. Good luck. <laughs> All right, now, uh, if we are ready, we're moving oh. to the second kind of steps, uh, which is side step. Now, side step is the step that allows us to change the direction. The beauty of this little system that we have today is that side step almost all the times comes after for the backward steps so we have our first step figured out now the second step is a side step now there are two kinds of side steps first is when we are situated on the inside edge of the turn second is when we're situated on the outside edge of the turn uh, of course in relation to our partner now for the inside edge of the turn we are allowing our partner to pass with that side step. So what we have to train here for that kind of step, we have to uh, train and understand the isolation that happens between our leg, our thigh, or if we'd like to femur bone, the bone inside our thigh, and our hip joint, our socket of our hip joint. Or in other words, the isolation between the leg and the pelvis. So for this one, the simple exercise is point the free leg in front of you, Probably Yaroslav is going to demonstrate his beautiful feet here. This is a simple exercise for <laughs> Lydia only. Very simple, guys. Very simple. At this moment of time, you haven't exercised with us yet. I really suggest get off the bed, get off the sofa, <laughs> and let's try to do that. This is super easy. You are going to be surprised, okay? But this is very helpful. <laughs> I'm already surprised. <laughs> now, again, Yaroslav is going to point his beautiful foot forwards and he's going to demonstrate his outward turn or the outside edge of the foot and inward rotation, inward turn, and he's going to point his inside edge of the foot. Now he's going to do eight of those. All right, okay. so as I'm, as I'm doing that, I just would like to share with you. As I'm doing that, I feel I'm not so much trying to point my foot in the different angle. What I'm trying to do is, I start with my foot and the uh, foot pointing out, but it is pointed out because my femur bone turned out. So my pelvis stays isolated, facing the camera. Now my femur bone inside my leg turned to the right. So that's why it gives me this look, or it gives you this look, that my foot is pointing uh, diagonally forward to the right. Now if I need to change that angle, I'm not trying to do anything with my foot. What I'm trying to do is I turn my femur bone inside this hip joint socket to the left. All right? So I'm going to point the femur to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Okay, now... Oh, now you feel the movement inside of the hips, inside of the hip joints. All right, let's do eight of those. How about that? When you do it, try really not to wiggle and not to change the... I want to help you with that. Okay. Let's secure the pelvis. Let's leave some help to Okay, so you can see how the isolation happens. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Let's switch the leg and we do exactly the same with the left foot. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Now, how simple is that? 
It's very easy to do. Very right? simple. Now let's do it okay, backwards. Let's do backwards. Let's point that foot backwards and you're stop. Maybe you stand sideways here so we can see you beautifully. Guys, I hope you're exercising. Okay? Now we're going to point that foot back and eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch the leg. Let's turn this way. Side. And again, notice how the pelvis stays still, the core is engaged. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Now, you too. Yes, always happy to help. Now, Yaris, I was going to explain you the. Yes. So now, uh, just the same way as uh, we were talking about the ankle joint, that it's very easy to get the movement when you have free leg, but it, it gets more tricky when we have weight on that uh, foot, because it's easy to have this bit, but not so easy to have this bit. Same thing happens with, uh, with this rotor reaction of our femur to the left and to the right, as they have body weight on that leg. So with this exercise, we didn't have any body weight, on the foot, uh, sorry, on the leg that we were turning to the right and to the left with our femur bone. So it was very, very obvious how it works. Now, it becomes more subtle when we have our body weight on that uh, leg. So what it gives us is when I, when I would like to turn my femur bone out to the right, I'm going to be standing on my right foot and I have weight on it. What is going to happen is my femur bone will be turning me to the right. But because there is body weight involved and the sole of the foot is attached to the floor, this will be a reference point that is not going to move. Instead, what is going to move is the hip, uh, is the femur bone in the hip joint. So as a result, my pelvis and everything on top will be turning to the left. But in order to do that, I'm moving my femur to the right, and then I do the same thing, but with the weight on it. So this is how my body will react into this action. So basically now I'm gonna go sideways with that. All right? Here comes our side step. Yeah, so on the side step, everything uh, we're going to do right now, make sure you understand that at some point, both femur bones will be in this position. So, Femur bone is here, just to remind you, and it's going to go this way. And then, of course, finally we will close our feet. Now, this is again just an exercise. I really would like to warn you right away that, uh, especially on the inside edge of the turn, timing for the person on the inside edge of the turn is crucial. So if you are doing this with a bad timing uh, towards your partner, it's going to cause a lot of problems. This is just an exercise for you to feel different joints in your body and how your body works. But then the key factor would be how you do it really together, two bodies in harmony with each other using the correct time. All right? Well, we can talk about it maybe later. For today, we're just doing the exercise and uh, we take the responsibility out <laughs> of the outcome. We're just doing the exercise today. All right, let me demonstrate this one. Yes, please. So we have that side step and we're on the inside of the turn and this step is going to create a pointing alignment in our moving foot. So the pointing alignment happens because we rotate the femur bone of the standing leg yeah. and we open and rotate the femur bone of the moving leg. This situation when my toes are uh, open and they are um, and the moving foot and the moving toe is pointing to the new alignment of the movement where I'm going to continue moving to. So here's the exercise. We're going to stand slightly diagonally. Yeah? Do you want me to do that? Uh, I want you to count me. <laughs> <laughs> so on one, I'm going to point the foot, open the femur bones, open the thighs. On two, I'm going to go on two toes, keep the toes open. And on three, I'm going to collect those feet together. And again, one, I'm going to point. Two, I'm going to step sideways, keep the toes to toe position, and three, I'm going to collect the feet together. I right. can do it all day. How about Counting. that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Ready? Ready? After three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, hold the foot, 
three feet together. So one point in the line, two ball, the foot, three together. Two more lead there. And one, two, three. Okay, one more, one more. One, two, three. Okay, not bad. How do you feel? Very important. <laughs> Very important. Now, the point in alignment, I should say, and this is probably a separate subject, but our feet are very important. We're going to talk about it a little bit later in our next class. Stay tuned. But what I feel now is very warm in my feet and my toes. So as you have noticed, I was standing on the toes a lot. Now, let's do, let's do yeah. the exercise for the uh, side step, but outside edge of the turn. Now, yes, when we're on the outside edge of the turn, from the other side of the going to be the Yeah, no that? problem. <laughs> We are rotating our uh, femur bones internally as well. So the same principle, Correct. but now we're rotating it, rotating it inwards. Yes. So of course, the big focus is on my moving leg as I'm choosing this angle where, where I rotate my femur bone more inside. And I have this inside edge of the foot position before I'm going to close my feet when I'm dancing. So for this exercise, we're not going to close our feet. We're just going to go uh, standing on the uh, right leg. I will be moving my left leg forward and I'm going to go and turn in one and then coming back two, three. Again, and one, two, three. Now, as Yaroslav is doing it and as he's preparing his foot on end, please notice how the steamer bone is already going to start rotating inwards and that is why he's going to get that beautiful inside edge of the big toe ready to turn in and around on the outside edge of the turn. Alright, let's do eight one side and eight another side. Uh, please, okay. I'm going to count. Okay. Guys, please do it together with us. Alright? And one, come back, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, four more, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, last one, and one, two, Three. Well done, good job. Let's switch the side, shake those legs. I really hope that you start feeling the isolation inside your hip joint. You really feel how that femur bone is rotating internally inside that hip socket. All right, let's get those hips warmed up. And switch the leg, eight of those, and one, and two, three, and two, two, three, and three, two, three and four two three good job and five two three and six two three and seven two three last one and eight two three great job everybody great job guys Thank all right you. by this time we should be ready to dance i'm telling you the body feels very warm uh now we got covered the second time of steps. Yes. Yes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to our shoulder lead and outside partner. So these are two types of steps, our third and our fourth type of step when they come together. Now when we step in our shoulder lead and outside partner, we must do the exercise that will help us to realize the relation between our feet and our shoulders. So the name says it all, it is a shoulder lead. So this is an easy beat. We're going to put our head in our shoulders and we're going to rotate our shoulder line to the right in relation to our feet. So this is the diagonal that we're going to create in our shoulder line in relation to our feet position. And for this one, we we'll probably have to take a little bit more space, right? So we will go a little bit backwards without changing the alignment of our feet. Our toes are pointing forward and our shoulders are in position we're going to start traveling diagonally across our foot. So when the left foot steps underneath the left shoulder, this step is going to be called a shoulder lead step. Now the next one, the right foot is, again, is going to step forward underneath the right side, and this is going to call outside partner step. And again, we're going to go left shoulder lead, and forward outside partner, and the last one, left shoulder lead. 
and we continue backwards. Now this is going to be called, without changing the position, we're now, is going, we're now going to have right shoulder lead because we're moving backwards, right foot underneath the right shoulder, shoulder lead, left foot backwards, underneath the left side, the partner is going outside partner, and again, right shoulder lead back, and left foot backwards, outside partner, right shoulder lead back, and one more backwards for the outside partner step. As we are doing this step, we really would like you to notice how our feet are always pointing forwards, forward towards the camera, our shoulders are slightly turned to the right, and as we are going, we keep the same feet alignment all the time. So you won't see me, for example, going uh, forward and then suddenly turning my foot to the right. My feet will always be going, uh, so my direction is forward diagonal to the left, but my feet always point in the camera. When I'm going backwards, backwards diagonal to the right, my feet always point in the camera. And let's do it on the ball of the foot as an exercise. Yes, yeah? and this is going to resemble with uh, our continuous swimming foxtrot. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very similar to that figure in Or outside post. change, outside change. In, in a way yeah. as well. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to set our left shoulder lead, prepare the left foot to step, weigh the toe, and we move. One, two, three, four, five. Good, no more space, let's go backwards. One, Two, three, four, and five. Good job. All right, now I'm just going to point very quickly a common mistake here is that when we're going outside partner, both ladies and gentlemen, somehow we're trying to create space and we're trying to uh, just stick that foot in <laughs> as fast as possible. So this is causing a big trouble because when we are trying to place that foot, um, ahead of our body, first of all, and uh, this is what happens. There is no space, therefore, we step and cross ourselves too much. Now, as you can see in this situation, my foot is not supporting my body weight, so now I get this kind of tilt, either stepping forwards or when I step backwards, I easily can get this kind of tilt. So, now uh, our suggestion is something, and something that we truly believe in, is that when we step outside partner, our moving leg has to always land underneath the side of the body. You can think of your hip joints, so the right foot always steps underneath the right hip joint and the left foot always lands underneath the left hip joint. We never ever get the situation when our feet go too much across our side because we get crooked and get off balance. And uh, it is an illusion really where uh, it looks like we are going across ourselves where we actually are not because our body turned to the right. So if, uh, if we will just demonstrate you the step forward and then we turn our body to the right, it very much looks like we are uh, crossing our uh, feet for the person who just has a glance uh, on it. But actually, as you can see, if we unwind, we are on two tracks. Plus, don't forget, when we are dancing, our feet are never straight like that. We always have certain angle. Very often they are diagonal. So therefore, this illusion can be even more dangerous. So if you do this exercise, you will very much uh, get a taste of this shoulder lead and outside step. And also, it will prevent you from uh, having troubles with your posture. Why? Because we are never crossing our tracks and therefore there will be less uh, <laughs> collision in the in the center. Okay, very good. Now the last type of step we're going to see, the fifth type of step is the easiest probably. This is the situation where we close our feet. Now some people call this step a weight change instead of a step. So what happens, we have our feet closed and we switch the weight from one foot to another. Now this happens very often, obviously in slow walls or in different kinds of chassis in other dances. Now the simple exercise we're going to take, we're going to do a few chassis to the side and what we would like to point and the principle that we would like to discuss here is posture and feet. So as simple as that, just to wrap up with the last type of step, uh, we're going to do one and two, three and four side chassis, one and two, three and four. Four. Now, the moment when we collect our feet, we have a situation of rise. We really uh, go up with our body and we rise in our legs. This is why we have the situation when our feet come together. Now, 
very beautiful when people collect their feet during the competition or performance and it really looks very classy. I really admire this one. <laughs> so again, I really focus on those feet and what I would like to do when I collect my feet together, except for the rise as well, I would really like to feel that my free leg is being in contact with the floor as long as possible with the inside of my big toe. So when I rise in my body, I feel the big toe is really brushing the floor until the very last moment. Then I change my weight and then I land it to another step. And again, to the side, I have a rise, brush the floor with the free foot, the inside of the toe, and then I land. Uh, just a few things. Uh, we can also treat it as an exercise for you to feel how we initiate the rise. So obviously we respect our footwork as we bend some figures and we really have to be clear about all the heels, toes and uh, ball of the foot, ball of the feet. However, in order for us to feel where we initiate the rise in our body, we would like you to, uh, to notice that every time we are getting uh, to a position like that and then we have to uh, start rising, of course, first thing that happens with us is continuous movement forward. Without movement forward, it's going to be quite difficult to achieve anything here, including the rise. Now, for me, in order to rise, what's going to happen is, at the moment, as you can see, my hip joint is uh, bent. So my femur bone is more up, my pelvis stays uh, still. Now, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to straighten my hip joint first. So that's the first initiation we're looking for when we're doing rise in any direction. So, together with the movement, I start rising from my hip joint. As a result, my knee reacts. And then if I choose to do it even more and move more forward, then I'm going to go on the ball of the foot. And as a result of the rise, I'm going to close my feet. So really, the only reason for you to close your feet is to exaggerate your rise. If somebody is dancing like that, suddenly start closing the feet, we have bad news for you. That's wrong. <laughs> it looks a little artificial. So let's do it as an exercise. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about the side steps? Yeah? Yeah, let's do the side steps. Very good. So we're going to do one, two, three, and four. A couple of those rising in our hips, knees, and ankles, and toes, and then really making sure our inside of the toes are in contact with the floor, center engaged, remember the posture, and practice hold. Are you ready, guys? And one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four. Couple more. One and two, three and four. One, rise, two, last one, three and four. Very good. So that was it. I thought we did a high five. <laughs> All right. So this is it. We had five kinds of steps covered. And one more time, these are forward and backward steps. These are side steps on the inside, on the outside. Shoulder lead steps, outside partner steps, and steps when we close our feet together. We hope you enjoyed our exercises. Uh, it would be, of course, great if you do it every day. Hopefully you remember all of them or you can save the video for later. Again, those exercises helped us a lot as well as our students and uh, we feel they can really develop the skill in your body and physical ability in order to achieve certain goals in your choreography. So don't treat it as a final uh, result, result, but treat it as a stepping stone and an exercise in order to achieve something. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arsla. Leah, do you feel a little bit warmer? Oh after yeah, ready first? to practice. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, <laughs> to take some water. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you one more time for joining us for this live lesson again. We're looking forward to hearing your feedback again. And please stay tuned for more classes on Dance Vision. If you have any questions, you can uh, totally ask them in the comment section and then uh, we will answer all of them as soon as we get to the computer. Alright? Thank you so Thank much. Bye-bye.